so for this week's video, I will be showing you the self-portrait that I made. It's actually the first self-portrait I've ever painted. I have done one from oil pastels, but this one is the first time I ever did a self-portrait using a mirror, which is not on the video, but it is right beside the painting, but I wanted to try to get as much painting in it as possible. And so as you could see, I kind of began with a wash and a charcoal drawing, but I wasn't really getting where I wanted. I didn't think it really looked like me, so I began kind of just sketching over it regularly with paint and started liking the results really a lot better. I understand that it looks a lot creepy right now, but that's because he, my teacher taught us to try to draw like a sculptor, almost like trying to understand like the skull underneath. So we actually had a little skull we could set up to look the same um, angle that we were looking and it was a little weird but I think it helped and to be honest I this is not my favorite painting of myself the end result I do not think looks a whole like lot like me but I do think that I learned a lot from this painting um, I am using the same color palette as the last painting so if you weren't here for the last painting I will put the link in there but it's basically called a warm and cool colors so it is a mixture or er, mixtures between yellow to red and so the light or the warmest colors of my face will be orange and the coolest will be like reds and yellows and so, yeah, you also can't see this, but there's also a red light bulb shining on my face to kind of help me distinguish those colors more. And I, I know that it's hard to see the colors right now. Here I'm starting to put more of the warm to cool colors in, starting with like the highlights being orange because orange is the warmest color on my palette, which I found out in the last painting. And so I I'm I don't know. I I always tell people not to judge a painting in the midst of it being painted, but I personally really struggled with this painting. I honestly not even sure if I like the end result, much less <laughs> any stage in between. <laughs> it was very strange and creepy. I think it was just kind of hard to look at myself objectively, to kind of just paint what was there. It was just a really odd experience. I think I learned a lot, but I still prefer either drawing from imagination or still life, or at least from a photo. I had a really hard time keeping my head still so I could look in the mirror because it was just... I like getting really close to the canvas to see what I'm painting so it was hard having to keep at arm's length to see what was going on. But I don't know, I think the more I worked on it the better it got. I kind of wish I had put more time or had more time to put into it or less time it's hard to tell because at this stage right here I think it looks closer to me structure wise than the end result I think the more detail I put in the more it kind of looked less and less like me so it was really hard to kind of figure out how I wanted everything to look and I don't know I mean I think it was a really good learning experience it was 
kind of disappointing re compared to my um, masterwork copy painting because I was so excited because I'd never been able to paint a person so well. But I found out that painting from life is a lot harder than just copying from a picture. And so it was just really difficult. One reason why this video is longer than I prefer, even though I sped it up a lot, was just because I think out of all my paintings, this is the one that I had to spend the most time on to actually make it look good or at least good enough. I don't know, it was, I have mixed feelings about this painting personally, but I mean, it, it's definitely an improvement from my last self-portrait, even though my last self-portrait was just a copy from a picture. This one at least had a little more form to it because I was painting from life. Although I think it would be a lot more interesting to paint a live model other than myself just because it was so hard to stay still and objective because I just, to be honest, you know, I look at myself in the mirror a lot, not for vain reasons, but just for artistic reasons. I like kind of studying my face in the mirror. So I'm, I wasn't like scared by looking at the mirror and having to paint what was there. I wasn't, I'm totally fine with my self image. I wasn't trying to make myself look prettier in the painting than I am. It was just more that I had gotten so used to looking at the details of my face that it was hard to look past the details to kind of study the structure and the fact that it was all warm and cool colors and that I couldn't paint the actual colors of my face was really difficult. I think I would have preferred either painting the real colors or painting black and white or at least achromatic because it was just really weird telling myself, hey, the skin's got to be orange here and it's got to be a little green over there. <laughs> I just had to really force myself to see colors as not what they were, <laughs> but it did give kind of cool artsy feel to it by the end of it, although it just, it's not one of my favorite paintings, but I think it was one of my biggest learning experiences, because there was a lot of what I wanted versus what I got out of it. And yeah, there was <laughs> a lot of finger painting involved. And I, I did, I'd, if there's any artist on here that you can like give me a little lecture because I, I, I know that a couple points I just got so tired and sick of the painting that I kind of start stopped cleaning off my brushes. So eventually the colors get a little muddy and so he at the end the very last picture on this video is actually the painting after I revised it because I think I got originally like a 85% on this painting and it was most a lot of it was just because the colors weren't as refined as they should have been so I did go back and at least clear up the colors. There was some other major mistakes that I could not go back and fix, mostly just because my setup was already taken down and we were already moving on to the next project. So I definitely did not have as much time as I kind of wish I had, but I was kind of impressed in what I accomplished in the time I did have. Although it was just it was a very hard painting. It was just kind of, by the end of it, I was kind of just sick of it and trying to get it done. Because usually I get more excited about my paintings as I go, but this one, I just couldn't make it look right no matter what I did. So it was a lot harder to make myself go in and paint every day just because I just 
wasn't completely satisfied with the results and really wanted it to move a lot further than it was. Um, let me think. Some of the critiques he gave me, I personally, because we made our own canvases and I decided that I wanted to try square because I had never worked on a square canvas and I did make this canvas very large because I know that one of my weaknesses is painting large so that's I feel like I honestly could have achieved this a lot better if I had painted it small but I wanted to push myself so this was actually a pretty large canvas compared to what I usually work on so it was a little scary in general and I think that's one problem I had on the painting is that I kept painting smaller than it should have been like I think I got the head size pretty well but then the features would be small comparatively so it's just hard to kind of push back and forth between what was there and what needed to be there and I honestly liked it in the end but my teacher did not like how I cropped it because he said that the shoulders should either be out of it or there should be more of them <laughs> but I wanted to make it not look like the other portrait I had painted and um Another little bit of a backlash I got was the fact that I had chosen to smile for this self-portrait. He did warn us that it would be way easier to, choose, to paint an expressionless face, but I just have a thing about smiles. They just are more human to me. It makes, I believe that like a smile is just a window to the soul or like how you're actually feeling and like your personality like you know eyes tell a lot but I think like you can actually tell whether someone's a nice person or not based on their smile like how real it is and so I just didn't want to paint myself just looking angry and grumpy because I just didn't think it matched my personality at all and it just wouldn't feel like a self-portrait if I was painting myself all serious like so I tried my best to at least do a simple smile I know it looks creepy at points <laughs> once again please don't judge it on the in-between and keep in mind that this is the first self-portrait I've ever painted especially in a mirror so Please give me a little grace for that, because I know it's kind of bad and scary at points. Which is another thing I just had a hard time getting over, because when you're painting an object, it's really easy to just be like, oh yeah, this, this looks like that, it doesn't matter. But when you're painting a face, you instantly know whether something is wrong, because you see faces so much, and people put so much interest in a face and so much importance in a face. So even if someone has never studied your face or never seen you before, people can tell if there is something wrong on a painting by how the face is structured because we so instantly know what a face looks like. Oh yeah, there was a small jump there. I have admittedly been having trouble with technology. I'm not sure if I didn't have space on my phone at that point and I just didn't video it, or if somewhere between getting it off of my phone onto my computer, if I just lost one of the sections of the video, because I do video whenever I come in. This is not in the very least in one sitting this this was a two-week painting that I would come in for about a couple hours a day to do which is why I have to speed this up so much because I don't think anyone wants to watch me paint for that long <laughs> at least I would be more bored out of my mind watching myself paint for that long 
but yeah, it was, it was very interesting. I found the eyes to be the easiest part, which I know that most people gripe about the eyes the most. Like they always say that it's the hardest thing to do. But I feel like whenever I study people or study my face, that's what I pay most attention about is like the eyes and like the shapes and how they look depending on your emotion. So I think the eyes are what kind of saved this painting because I know that the nose, I had so much trouble on the nose. <laughs> I had never, no idea that it would be so hard to paint a nose because I've gotten very used to painting faces straight on. So doing it from that slightly side angle was driving me insane. The teacher, that was one of the requirements my teacher gave us is to give paint ourselves from a side angle like that. So it was really, really awful and I didn't like it. I would say that my favorite parts of this painting or at least the final painting, which I know you can't see yet, would probably be the eyes, the mouth, and the hair. Maybe the neck. The neck I liked at one point, but then got a little messed up when I tried to revise the painting because it was just, I only had like 30 minutes to revise my painting because of time constraints and trying to do this and that and moving on to our next project. So I hated myself when I messed up the neck because it was one of the things that I'd liked so much about the painting. But at the same time, I didn't have enough time to go back and fix it and a lot of the paint had dried. So I didn't have time to mix up new colors for the palette and I was just so upset but I would say that there was good things and bad things about this painting. I do not think I would <laughs> really hang this painting on my wall or let my relatives hang it up on their wall just because it would make me cringe so much every time I saw it just because there was so much that went wrong even though some things went right and it would just kind of bug me constantly to be honest. But yeah, I, there was times that I did actually like the painting and was very proud of the painting. But I think especially since it was of my face, it's very easy for me to see mistakes I made that I want to go f back and fix. But there's also just that time when you have to decide the painting is done. And I made that decision that the painting was done and now I really don't want to go back and fix it. And so it was also a very interesting study of myself, even though I had spent I have spent so much time looking at my face before studying it. Painting it was kind of like relearning it. Like my lips I found, at least proportionately, were a lot bigger than I ever thought they were. And um, I don't know, I always like to put highlights in the hair and try to make the hair look more lively, but it is a lot darker than I think I <laughs> had originally put in the painting. So I had to go back and darken it. But I, there is a certain fondness in this painting that I, I do like. It's just really hard for me to say that I love this painting because I, I honestly don't. It just, there wasn't enough time or patience and I just would often get upset at it. So <laughs> there was good things and bad things. It just, I don't know because this is where he had me put more color into it and I honestly liked it more before I put in all that color. But yeah, this is the final thing. Or I think this is actually the final thing before I went back and revised it. 
Once again, I do like the eyes. The eyes are the one thing I do like about it. I do. And I, I mean, I still would label this painting as a success. And here is the revised one. As you can see, it just, the neck makes me cringe. I messed up the neck so much. I loved the neck, but when I tried to fix the color and put more color into it, it just, it did ruin the neck a little bit and that made me very sad, but I still like the face and the eyes. I, proportionately wise, I would say that there is more than a few problems, but once again, I think it's just my habit of trying to paint large, but then slowly switching to small. So I think the face, I don't know what's wrong with it. <laughs> I don't fully like it, but I mean, it was a learning experience, so I can appreciate it. I can, I can be okay with it. <laughs> but yeah, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. I know it's not one of my better videos, but I hope it will give you some encouragement knowing that not every painting is an excess, a success, and that's okay as long as you learn from it. And I learned a lot of things from it, so... I can still like this painting knowing that it at least taught me something. So yeah, you all have a wonderful day and I'll hopefully see you next week. All right, bye.